Hi, I'm Neil Prendival, welcoming you to the Boardwalk Bar and Grill here in Cork City. My guest this week is an amazing lady, the author of this book, Anti-Aging Secrets for Men and Women. In the days that we live in, we're more conscious of our lives, more conscious of our bodies, and more conscious of our well-being. Her name is Mahiana Isabel Dugast. And I could say your name all day. Thank you, Neil. It just kind of rolls off the tongue, doesn't it? Isabel Dugast. French, Thank of you. course. I am, I am. Yeah, yeah. Although you've been in Ireland for some time now. 15 years, actually. Yeah. And before yeah. that, wandering around India, I'm told. Is that right? I was living in England for 10 years, but I traveled in and out of India for 16 years, yes. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. so wh why do we age? Why do we grow old? It seems such an unfair thing to happen. Yes, it is. I suppose it's, this is biological. A part of it is biological. That's what happens the minute we, we, we're born. We start, you know, we call it growing for a while and then we call it aging. Yeah. You know, so you're growing old from the moment you're born then? Uh, yes. Yeah. And what is the idea then is to try and slow down that process as best you can? No, aging is really going to happen. I think it's very much of an attitude, you know. There's just, first of all, a huge business around the anti-aging thing. So although it's a very commercial title, I prefer the subtitle, which is the complete self-rejuvenation for conscious men and women, yeah, because yeah. it gives you a little bit more power in how you age. Aging is going to happen anyway, but you might as well age well, feeling well, you know, and... Can I just, I, I was going to get to that near the mm -hmm. end actually, uh, but you've brought it up now, the whole aspect of cosmetics and sure. the cosmetic industry, sure. because it is a billion dollar it industry is. worldwide. Mm -hmm. But in the book, you, you kind of dismiss it all, uh, uh, saying, I'm not quite sure what words you use, but you use words along the lines of them, um, that you have never come across a, a product that you ever thought worked. If you have money, spend oh. it, but if you don't, you don't have to. I'm talking about anti-aging creams, actually. Creams, yes, things yes. like that, yeah. Anti-aging creams don't work. I'm very sorry to, I'm not the first one to say that on, on So TV. how can they get away with marketing it like that, with all of the advertising? Mm -hmm. People hope, people really, really hope, and they, maybe there's a part of it that's psychological, I think. You know, if you spend 100 euro on a cream, the next morning you feel you look better already. Now there's nothing wrong with spending a lot of money on creams. They look pretty on the chest or in the bathroom. But I think it's good to know, and it's about time since anyway we're going through the recession and various other economic crises, to know that you might as well have a tub of Nivea, you know, or a tub of, uh, I can't name any names, but, you know, everybody can look well, basically, as long as you moisturize your skin. There's no cream in the world that's going to take off your wrinkles. I'm amazed and how they that, can get away you know, with using terms then, like anti-wrinkle cream. They do for cellulite, you know, Neil, you probably don't have that problem. But <laughs> I'm a man, I don't think we have other problems. <laughs> you don't that. get those <laughs> problems, yes, but they sell every spring. There's millions, millions of pounds and dollars being made for anti-cellulite products and none of them work. None yeah. of them work. Yeah. Now, cosmetic surgery does work. And if, I mean, I don't advertise it and I'm not against it. It's the, the book is very much there to give people the information and therefore the power to make their own decisions. Okay, so you go through it kind of like chapter by chapter, verse uh -huh. by verse. You talk about the foods we eat, uh, the lives we live, uh, our sex life, uh, the mm -hmm. importance of meditation and, and, and relaxing and things like that. What makes it different to, different to all of the other self-help books that are on the shelves? So there are many. I mean, one mm -hmm. could say that your book is like so many other books that are just like the anti-aging crimp creams and, and anti-wrinkle creams. Absolutely, Neil. It is, there's nothing new in it, actually. Probably the only thing is that everything is under one roof, you know? So when you buy a self-help book, they often cover the spiritual aspect of ourselves, and ultimately that should be enough for everybody. And I read many, and I love them. There's books uh, I recommend at the back in the list of recommended reading. Eckhart Tolle and people like that, wonderful people who write spiritual self-help books, you know. Now, a lot of people I find, because I've been teaching for uh, some time in Ireland here for 15 years, don't know where to start. And in your daily life, you can go to a workshop and feel absolutely amazing for a weekend. And then you come home and you have the neighbors, you have the kids going to school, you have the food, you face the supermarket, you face the creams, you face having less money, more money. And what you Stress, do is everything. That's tension. it. Stress, tension, yeah, you have yeah. it. Absolutely. So the book very much takes people uh, through, we start with the physical and then we go through the, the emotional and mental. But isn't, mental. Most, isn't most of our...